Hi everybody, this is Liz with 143 Handmade. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So today I am doing Defemember 2022, hosted by 49 Dragonflies and Louise Heinzel. And today I am doing Day 10, Leaves and Envelopes. So have you ever been out somewhere and collected a leaf or something or a flower and brought it home and pressed it and then you have no idea what to do with it? Well, I have this idea and about how to save these things, how to how to use them, you know. Oh, don't want to fold it. Oh, it broke. That's okay. So, it, but at the same time, if you don't have real leaves, don't worry about it. You can totally do this with punched out leaves. Same idea. But obviously, you know, it's going to look a little different if you have real leaves versus fake leaves. But it'll all be great. So, um, first thing is finding an envelope that has the nice big window on it. You could probably do it with these smaller ones. Like if you only had a small leaf, you could totally do the same concept. But I like these ones with the bigger windows. This is just a CD, um, one of those paper CD holder things. And then this is a piece of junk mail. Um, I'm not sure what came in it, but I saw this nice big window and I, you know, I had this really cool idea. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. So first things first is, you know, you could put them in there as a shaker, but some of these leaves can get very delicate. So I didn't really want to do a shaker with, with the real leaves. So my first step is going to be to cut a piece of cardstock or, you know, something to act as background. I'm going to use this piece out of a, um, this is out of a landscape book. And let's see. If I, yeah, I can double it over. Yeah, like so. And uh, make it be as big as we need it to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of glue it, you know, right along this edge. Go right along this edge so that way no matter where I overlap it, it'll be glued well on the edge. But this is not going to see a lot of direct use because it's going to be tucked in, but still. So I'm just going to lay that over like so. You know, and you can be as careful or as sloppy as you like. You know, really personal preference. You know, that's one of the great things about paper crafting is that almost everything comes down to just what you want. Just your, what you like, and you can do it however you want to do it. Okay, and that's going to be just a little bit too big. So I'm going to come over here. And because this envelope has this nice wide white rim around the window, your edges don't have to be perfect. See that? And yeah, it's got that crease in it. You could get a solid piece if that bothers you. You could use, you know, something like this if you wanted instead. You know, it really doesn't matter. You don't even have to back it if you don't want to. You could just leave it, you know, just that plain. That's the, you know, and this one is the security stuffs. But then what I would do, but then what I was thinking I would do is I would take these leaves that you know I want to preserve and lay them in here somehow you know however however your little heart fancies you know however it looks good to you it doesn't have to make sense to anybody you could tell a story here you know if you have like throughout the day if you know that you found you know this first at the at the first part of your walk you know you can make it a point to put that you know, over here, you know, and then say you found this next, and so you're going to put that next, and I want to cover up that crease, so I'm going to go ahead and just lay that leaf under like that, and then, you know, you found these guys last, you know, in your day, and so you want to stick that, you know, 
on the left. But that's totally, you know, you could just, you know, put it in some way that's just visually appealing. It doesn't have to tell a story. It doesn't have to, you know, make any kind of sense. But I just wanted to, you know, throw that idea out there. I know I'm just going to use just a little bit of Fabrifix to go ahead and, and adhere these down. Let me see which side do I want up on this guy. Yeah, I want the other side up, so I'm going to put just a little bit of glue down the spine. Just the tiniest amount of glue. And then set it down. There we go. And then this guy next, because I want him under. So i got to do that one next. Let's see. Which side do I want up? This side. So again, just the smallest amount. We're talking about a dried leaf here. You know, we do not need a lot. And actually, that was kind of a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just wipe it off on that one. And then I'm going to put this guy down right across that crease. Um, I really wasn't sure how well these were going to dry because they're kind of fuzzy, these leaves out in, you know, when they're fresh. They were kind of fuzzy, so, but they actually dried really, really well. I have an old um, medical textbook that's super, super thick and heavy, but it's got these really, um, like, smooth pages. The pages are really, really thin and really smooth, but it's it weighs a lot all at the same time. And so that's what I use to press my flowers with. I just, throughout the year, whenever I find anything pretty and I have the chance, I um, just pick it and put it in that book. And then whenever I want to play with some real leaves, I just pull that book out and see what's available. See what's dry, see what's not, you know. What worked, what worked well. What didn't. You know, doesn't take a lot to dry flowers, mostly just time, time and pressure. You do want it to be dry, you do want them to be flat, for, well, for junk journaling especially, you'd want them to be flat, but, but really, it doesn't, there's lots of methods of preserving flowers if you really want to explore that, but if you just want to press a few for your, for your journal purposes, I highly recommend just going and getting a cheap um, textbook of some sort and just sticking it on a shelf somewhere and whenever you find something interesting just put it in there. You know? There we go. And like I said, obviously, you know, you can do the same thing with, with punched out leaves, you know, and, and die cuts and anything else. But I thought this would be a great way to preserve the, the real leaves. And, you know, with the hobby and the holidays and everything, I figured some people might be saving, you know, poinsettia leaves and that kind of stuff. And so I'm going to go ahead and stick these guys in here like so. Okay, and that's going to stick out just a little bit, So because I put that awfully close to that one edge, so I'm going to have to bring it back out a little bit, so I'm going to have to trim off just a bit, and then I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on the back of this guy, it doesn't need to be a lot, you know, it's not going to have a chance to move around a lot, but because it's not going to just fill the space because see the edge is just right there so I'm just tucking it just past that edge so that way it doesn't fall you know and move around on us I'm going to go ahead and glue that back in okay and now I'm going to go ahead and reclose my envelope here just all the way along this edge Close it down like it was, and then fold this up like so, 
And then I was actually thinking that it would look really, really cute to take it to the sewing machine and go across here first. And then just sew all the way around on this side and have the sewing, you know, as the detail on there. And then you'd have a pocket that you could add, um, you know, a little note about the memory of whatever these, these leaves are that you've now preserved. So that was my idea for leaves and envelopes. So don't forget to like and subscribe and to click on, or not click on, but type in Defemorember and check out everybody else's awesome inspiration. And thanks again to Barbara and Louise Heinzel. Well, I don't know Barbara's last name, but Barbara at 49 Dragonflies and Louise at Louise Heinzel. So thank you so much.